so design is important, and uh, you probably heard about this. This is a, an app by uh, Jobon. And so this measures my uh, steps. Um, I use it for the New York Marathon, 50,000 steps. And um, it measures my sleep. And so I'm really thrilled that we, we have Yves Behar, who is the chief creative officer of Jobon and the CEO, for, CEO and founder of Fuse Labs, who is going to discuss with uh, my very good friend, Om Malik, who is the CEO of GigaOM. Please join us on stage, Yves and Om. Welcome, Yves. <coughs> merci. So glad you, merci beaucoup d'être venu de si loin. Absolument, Loïc. We you. can do it in French too? I try. Please. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hi there. So, Yves, um, nice to see you, finally. Um, we've been planning to meet up for about a month and a half. Our office is right next to each other in San Francisco. His office and my office share the back wall, it's probably. <laughs> but good to finally spend some time with you. So I had no idea that you were the chief creative officer for Jawbone. When did that happen? Um, that happened, I've been working with Jawbone for about 10 years. So even before there was a product, um, there was a technology, and I started to work as soon as um, Hossein and Alex, the two founders, um, moved into moved the idea of let's make a product. You know, this is an incredible technology. Let's turn it into um, into a consumer product. So, is this your first uh, consumer product from a technology standpoint? Or? No, no. I um, so I'm to to give like a, a, a very quick context. I'm Swiss. I grew up in uh, Lausanne, in uh, not far from 700 kilometers from here, and. Um, I moved to Silicon Valley in the early 90s when everybody, absolutely everybody in my entourage, every designer that I knew was like, what the hell are you going to, what, what are you doing moving to America? What are you doing moving to Silicon Valley? Um, people were really incredulous that there was any work to do there or that the, the environment would be um, uh, supportive you know, of design and design ideas. Um, so I moved there at the time. I worked for Frog Design. I worked uh, with Apple Computers as a consultant. Um, I, I Silicon Graphics. Um, I essentially grew as a designer with technology around me. But things definitely are different now, right? Like uh, from the time you moved to the Valley and, and, and the time today, things... I mean, look at uh, Up is a beautiful product. So it's, Sure. Uh, it's been an incredible change. I mean, when I first moved to Silicon Valley, really, every businessman, every technologist that I met um, didn't look at design as it was adding any value. You know, the return on investment of design um, was really not there or, or not perceived as being there. So it was really an uphill battle. I had to constantly um, explain and convince people that were essentially unconvinced of the value of design in technology, in startups, in building a brand. Um, it, was, it was certainly an uphill battle. Right, so you think the, I was reading your biography and it's, you, you worked on Slingbox and then lately on a lot of right. job owned products. There has been a progression in thinking about design. Right. What has brought about that thinking and what, why are people thinking? So first, first of all, as a Swiss, designer, um, something magical happens when you, when you arrive um, in San Francisco or the Bay Area, is essentially people trust you, they're listening to you. Um, you, you know, they, they give you the keys to the office, meaning you can stay on the weekend and you can try things. And you, it's a completely different environment compared to most design offices or most environments, creative environments um, that, I, that, I knew, that I knew of uh, back then. Um, and at first, I started as a consultant. So in '99, I started a, a firm, a design firm called Fuse Project, um, and we mostly had a business model, which is a traditional business model of consulting. Um, then I worked with um, the uh, Blake Kokorian and Jason Kokorian on, on Sling Media, Slingbox, and we. Um, 
help them build a brand. We, we came up with a name, we uh, you know, built the, the sort of the, the, the products and the, the packaging and the whole ethos around what Sling was going to be about, you know. Um, and within three years, it was a very successful venture. Um, it sold. Uh, and, and, and there I learned that essentially, in my opinion, the traditional business model of design was dead. Because the only reason why I stayed so long with Slingbox or why I've been so long with, uh, with uh, Jawbone is the fact that I essentially have the same incentives as the owners, as the founders. In fact, with Jawbone, I am a de facto you know, uh, uh, founder and, and partner. And so the same in incentives ran for me and allows me not to be a short time higher, but rather to do what's right for the company, whether they're at a stage A, you know, or, or angel investors, or, or series A, or whether, you know, at every stage, there are certain needs. And I'm able to work with those founders, build those needs, be, build compelling brands, compelling experiences, um, and um, do what, what a brand needs, which is to constantly evolve, constantly feed onto itself, be um, inspired by the technology, be inspired by the marketing, be inspired that, by the branding, be inspired by um, all the different elements that, that, that construct what a brand is. I think the, the interesting part of what you're talking about, being a partner with these startups, you're saying design is more than just what is like a pretty thing or a beautiful looking device. It goes beyond that. It's more than right. that. Is it yeah. business logic? In today? Well, I mean, essentially design, for me, the, the best definition, you know, and people always ask you for a definition of design. So the best definition I have, I have found is um, that, that good design accelerates the adoption of ideas. And essentially a startup is an idea. It's what happened, you know, what would happen if things if people communicate in this way, or what, what happened if you know, this product uh, helped me accomplish certain, certain tasks? And that idea initially is mostly, inaccept you know, as we heard from Bill Gross, is mostly unacceptable, you know, or mostly misunderstood. And design in many ways sort of builds all the moments, the moments of delight, the moments of discovery, the moments of... Um, excitement, the moments when you want to share, helps build those moments into um, the adoption of the idea. Right. So from a startup perspective, you're saying that, or I, I don't want to, but what I'm, I'm hearing is that the design is not about a, an object, it's more about every startup needs to have design thinking right. in their right. entire process. Right. I mean, typically design has been treated like this. It's like you have a, you know, you have a, a software designer, you have a, a user experience person, you have a hardware person, you have a marketing person, you have an industrial designer, you have, you know, communications, you have packaging, and you have to brief a lot of different agencies, a lot of different people. And let's be honest. Designers never want to do what the last guy, you know, worked on, right? They always want to reinvent um, the whole, the whole, you know, uh, brief. Um, and so, what I believe is is essentially in building brands with design, with a 360-degree uh, perspective, which is that all these elements don't have to be done by a single person or by a single uh, group, a sim single uh, design group. Um, but they have to be conceived as such. They have to be, they all have to function together. And people have to do more than one part to truly be able to contribute, to truly create something that is, um, that is going to be unique, that's going to stand out, that's going to have a personality. In a way, it is like the Apple way of thinking, right? Yeah, I mean, Apple certainly has, you know, has opened the doors wide for us. And, uh, and in many ways, what I was saying about having no credibility in the, uh, in the business world as designers, um, Steve Jobs has created that credibility for us. I mean, you know, if you look at the 90s, everybody looked at 
design and looked at Apple in many ways, um, you know, as a as a as a personal exercise and you know, in in as a, as a as a sort of an ego project almost, right? Um, until Apple proved that not only they could um, captivate the entire world, you know, with their products and the entire experience of their products. Um, but before, before that, essentially, you had hardware, and you had software, and you had user interface, and you slapped the, two, the, the three things together, and who knows what happens? Who knows if people like it or not? Right. I think, is that what you're trying to do with uh, Jawbone, like create the whole experience? So, you know, with, with, with Jawbone, it, I think what's very interesting is how um, the ex what was called an accessory, you know, a Bluetooth headset or a jam box, a, a wireless speaker, um, uh, or the up bracelet, to me, those are not accessories anymore. They actually are the center of the experience. Music coming out of, you know, uh, Bluetooth wireless speakers, that's the experience. You know, your iPad or your iPhone is what enables it, but the experience at the end of the day is actually the accessory. So, you know, we see a lot of projects and a lot of really interesting things happening today where, um, you know, you have a, the mixture of, a, of an app, you have a mixture of a product, and the two together create a true new experience. So what we're trying to do with, with, uh, with Jawbone is move away from, I mean, not move away, simply take what we've built in Bluetooth headsets, which, is, which are incredibly successful, and bring those things into categories such as sound and music or health and fitness, um, and create um, you know, a, a level of delight and excitement and a level of design that isn't known in the space. You know, it's a funny thing you bring that up. I, you and I have talked about that at Backstage. Square and Airbnb are two companies which focus right. on the idea of delight as a design experience. And yeah. the, the delight and you know, happiness being the outcome of design. Right. Uh, you know, what should you think, what do you think startups should be doing and thinking about when thinking about design and, and right. experience? Well, I think most, a lot of the significant startups are already doing that. Um, Bruce Nussbaum, who is a um, uh, contributor to um, Fast Company, um, uh, wrote recently a very interesting column where he said, designers are the new American entrepreneurs, are the new symbols of entrepreneurship. And, you know, <laughs> this is something that you would have been sort of laughed out of the building. You know, you would have said this any, you know, five, ten years ago. But, um, you know, the Airbnb founders are industrial designers. Uh, the YouTube founders are designers. You know, there is, design has really become the place where designers are able to sort of take permission. This is the way banking was done, or this is the way, you know, hoteling was done, or this is... And simply to, to, to kind of throw that out of the window. I mean, what's amazing to me is you would have put, you know, a hundred hotel, top hotel executives in a room for a week, and you would have asked them, come up with the next thing in, you know, in the hotel business. I am absolutely certain they would not have come, come up with Airbnb. You know, it takes a different perspective. It takes um, the, the sort of the, the creative training and the sort of the, the ability to visualize an idea and to carry it forward, uh, to make it real, to make it palpable, to make it adopted, as I was saying, um, for, you know, for, for such a radical new vision to, uh, to come to life. Right. So, is it safe for me to assume that you believe that technology should almost be transparent and the only thing which should matter is not even the how our object looks, but how we interact with the experience or the experience we have? Uh, yes, I mean, it's, it's a 360 degree um, uh, sort of offering, you know, it's a 360 degree experience. Um, the, it has to be the product, it has to be the experience. And w everywhere where it fails slightly, it's amazing because you get 
a hundred people remarking on this. You, you get thousands of people. And so what design needs to do and what everybody needs to do is very, very quickly iterate, obviously, uh, on this. So you need to be able to, you know, if, if you are a consultant, you essentially create a product, you deliver this product, um, and then you're gone. You're working on something else. You're, you know, uh, you never hear the kind of feedback that I hear uh, being a partner in about 15, 17 companies today that we are, like Jawbone. Um, you never hear that immediate direct feedback. And so creating and fixing and improving is, um, is, 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 is fundamental. And, but doing it at the entire, you know, at the entire experience, whether it's how hard it is to get something out of the box, out of the packaging, or whether it's a more fundamental um, uh, interface uh, question. Do you think this thinking in, uh, extends beyond physical products and into digital services? So we, we're, we've moved initially, I was educated as, a, as, a, um, you know, as an industrial designer, like, um, like Brian Chesky of Airbnb, um, I'm only of, I'm, I'm a little bit older, um, and uh, just slightly, <laughs> just slightly, um, and so that's where I started. That said, we've we've moved into packaging, communications, branding, and um, now we we've moved into uh, user interface and experience design. Um, it's it's. And, and even now we're moving into communications. Um, to me, it's critical to integrate um, these functions. Not, and, and this is how we work. I mean, if somebody calls us up and says, hey, Eve, I need a website, or I need a logo, that, that isn't what we do. What we do is build a business through many of the facets that are needed. So essentially, the execution isn't you know, it's, it's critical that we have the technical abilities in-house and that we have uh, experience in those executions. But fundam fundamentally, what drives uh, everything we do is the core idea, the core brand, the core, the core business that we're, that, we're, that we're set out to build. So I know just while you were talking about that you were trained as an industrial designer, and, and, you know, I believe that we've seen the end of industrial era in a sense with the in the 21st century so is there such a thing called an industrial designer anymore i i actually think um you know i i don't need to be sort of uh romantic about the notion of uh industrial design it, it, that said i do think it's here to stay and and here's why i think we are moving away from um mass industrialization uh, meaning millions of products made exactly in the same way um, to serve the exact same purpose or to serve people in the exact same fashion. I think we are moving into mass individualization, which doesn't mean less products are going to be made, um, doesn't mean less um, uh, uh, objects are going to be needed, uh, but they're going to actually be made with people's preferences, uh, people's actual needs, personal needs, with, with more individualized culture elements uh, within them. And I think that's going to be a huge challenge in, in, um, in, you know, in, in the world of consumer electronics, but in the world of products in general, is how we're going to adapt our you know, industrialization and our production uh, uh, to, to this mass individualization. So do you think we should also be thinking about des the design of physical goods from a 3D printing perspective in the future? From a what? From the 3D printing, you know, there's a 3D printers which are coming out. Yeah, um, you know, 3D printing, it's funny because, I mean, industrial designers have used 3D printing for, for the longest. I mean, it's, you know, 20 something years already. Um, I, I'm not like a, like a, a believer that people want to have a 3D printer in, in their living room and sort of print out, um, you know, a piece of a glass or a plate that's just broken. Um, I'm, I believe in mass individualization and I believe in 
uh, people wanting to intervene and, and get things that are made just for them. I'm not um, a believer that we're going to have the machinery in everybody's garage or, or living room or, 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 um, uh, or kitchen to do that okay. um, in, 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 a, in a widespread manner. Uh, clearly, you're a skeptic. I have one last question sure. before uh, our time's up. So beyond Apple and Jawbone, who are the people you think are doing the design from a user experience and design experience standpoint well? Uh, who is doing it well? Yeah, in the um, tech space. In the tech space. Um, well, <laughs> it's interesting because everything is becoming somewhat of the tech space, right? Um, so I would, I would name you know, companies like Herman Miller or Vitra, and you think, oh, well, they make furniture, they make the things we sit on, and yet at the same time, um, they really help us adapt to new ways of working and new ways of interacting, new ways of collaborating, and I think that's going to be critical. That said, um, in the tech space, you know, the, 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 um, the kind of work I've seen, and we've mentioned it a few times, you know, uh, Airbnb doing or, or Path, um, with you know, with uh, with uh, Path Two, with their new uh, interface, um, those are design-led companies, and um, I think I think those those are the future. Great, thank you, Eve. Thank you, thank you for the conversation, and I think our time is up. And I wish I had more time to talk. Keep talking to you. Thank you See very you much. Soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was fascinating. Thanks, thank Sam. you, Loïc. Merci, Eve. À bientôt alors.